Hello and good morning, everyone. I'm Karandeep Saran, the Medical Center Director here at VA Loma Linda Healthcare System. Thank you so much for joining us today for this Veterans Town Hall meeting. Everyone here at VA Loma Linda is honored to care for you and answer the call to make lives better today than they were yesterday. I'm proud to serve alongside our incredible VA Loma Linda team who's prepared some great information to share with you today. You'll hear about our Women Veterans Program, Community Care, My Healthy Vet, and upcoming events at VA Loma Linda. We're also thrilled to welcome our VA partners from the Riverside National Cemetery. I wanna start by sharing some exciting news with you about what's happening at VA Loma Linda. Earlier this year, we opened a new community-based outpatient clinic in Hemet, California. And we've already received a lot of great positive feedback from veterans who are happy to receive their VA care closer to home. This is a change in the way we're delivering primary care to our veterans in the Inland Empire. This was the first VA operated community-based outpatient clinic here in the VA Loma Linda healthcare system. In addition to expanding our sites of care, we're actively working to improve our existing facilities. This week, we celebrated a newly renovated Four Northwest inpatient care unit at our main hospital in Loma Linda. Uh, Four Northwest is actually gonna open at the end of this month for veterans care. And it's gonna feature 17 single occupancy rooms with privacy windows, elegant modern interior finishes, a state-of-the-art telemetry system, centralized nursing stations, and more. In addition to hearing the latest updates from VA Loma Linda during this town hall, we want to hear from you. If you're joining us by phone and you have a question, please press star three at any time during the event to be connected to one of our team members. They're standing by, ready to take your questions and share them with our team. If you're joining us on the live stream, you'll see a text box where you can type in your name and question. We plan to answer some of those questions today. There's over 1,500 attendees on this call right now, so we won't be able to answer every single question live, but we do commit to making sure that any questions that you have that you wanna ask to our team members, we will follow up to ensure that they address your concerns and provide you with the information you need. I encourage you to please reach out during this event with any questions you may have. If there are questions related specifically to your care, we will be respecting the privacy of your health information and not answering those questions in this forum. And a member of our team will reach out to you personally to talk with you today after today's meeting. To stay connected and up to date with what's happening at VA Loma Linda, you can subscribe to email updates on our website and follow us on social media at VA Loma Linda on Facebook as well as on X. I wanna thank you for taking the time to join us today. We're excited to share some great information and answer your questions. Now it's my distinct pleasure to welcome and introduce Mr. Al Marconi, a U.S. Army, vet, Navy, Army and Navy veteran of 14 years. He recently attended the National Veterans Wheelchair Games in New Orleans, Louisiana, where he competed in archery, motor rally, motorized slalom, and wheelchair soccer. Mr. Marconi won two gold medals and one silver. Mr. Marconi started receiving his care here in Loma Linda in 2006, not only does he receive his care here, but he volunteers his time at the medical center and hopes he can inspire other veterans with his story. Mr. Marconi, thank you for joining us to share and we look forward to hearing your veteran story. Good morning. My name is Al Marconi. This last June, I uh, celebrated my 79th birthday. And I have no doubt that I would never have gotten there were it not for the VA uh, Medical System and the Loma Linda Medical Center in particular. In 2006, I was the victim of a hit and run accident. I was in a coma for 22 days. And uh, over the following years, um, I had both my hips were removed and, uh, and replaced. And uh, during my stay here, uh, I received intensive physical therapy. And it's because of the, uh, the work of the physical therapists uh, I was despondent. I thought, well, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be able to walk, run. I'm not going to be able to do anything. But because of what they've done, I'm able to get up, do my own laundry, uh, do my own housework, cook. Uh, they restored my, my ability to uh, be independent. Okay. Uh, as, uh, as I proceeded, I, uh, I got involved in uh, adaptive sports in sports in general. And through the recreation department, I, uh, I volunteer and I try to uh, do my example 
perhaps inspire some other veterans to get into sports too, because you have to be active. There's no uh, things about it. And uh, as a, an alternative to that, um, I encourage people that, because like, like myself, there's more to it than just sitting in your hospital room feeling sorry for yourself. Okay? I'm not handicapped, I'm handy capable. And it's because of the efforts of the Loma Linda staff here uh, that uh, I'm able to be this way. Uh, I compete nationally now also, and uh, I inspired to be in the next Paralympics. But, uh, and I have nothing but gratitude for everyone here. Oh, that's amazing. I'm so grateful to hear that you're able to receive the care and support you need here at VA Loma Linda. And I hope that your fellow veterans on this call today are encouraged by you. Um, next, I'd like to introduce Miss Ashley Bear. She's our women's program, uh, women's veterans program uh, representative. And she's gonna give us an overview and information about the care and services we offer that are tailored to the needs of women. Ms. Bear. Hey, good morning and thank you, Mr. Saran, for introducing me. I am here on behalf of the Women's Veteran Program. Um, I would like to start with my first slide with military exposures of women's for women's veteran. Um, I will start with that all females can do everything that a male can do within combat. So they can do infantry, combat engineer, special war, uh, will warfare, ship submarines, air support pilots, forward deployed, and they can do everything. Um, the most common uh, accident that they have would be TBIs, and that's because they are um, they are exposed to explosive devices, IEDs, RPGs, uh, motors, heavy guns, and small firearms. And then as well as their daily operations, so muscular skeletal, uh, skeletal injuries, uh, equipment and gear, that could be one of the reasons, ceramic vests, extreme temperatures, and hygiene issues. They are also exposed to military sexual trauma, so MST, which is also what it's known as, um, and, success and susceptible to all the same injuries as male veterans. Um, if I could move on to the next slide. And then here we have a small graph for our female veterans. In 2017, we started here in Loma Linda with 7,952. And then we went from, in 2018, we have 8,400. 2019, 8,970. And then 2020, 9,209. And then we do have a gap from 2020 to 2024. That is going to be 10,189 female veterans that we have enrolled here in Loma Linda VA. So our numbers are going up and we, we are welcoming all female veterans. So please enroll. <laughs> um, I would like to move on to the next slide. The care that we offer here for our women's veterans at, here at Loma Linda VA, we have comprehensive primary care acute and a chronic illness, preventive care, uh, gender uh, specific contraception, menopause management, sexual health, uh, gynecology care, medical and surgical services, breast health mammograms, breast cancer screening, integrated mental health services, individual psychotherapy and groups, mental health medication management, social work services, maternity and, inf and infertility benefits. We do offer maternity care coordination and then also infertility community referral, uh, also known as IUI and IVF. But I do want to um, I do want to state that for IVF, you do have to be service connected for that. So if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to our Women's Veteran Program and we can assist you on that. And if I would like to move on to the next slide. And then also I would like to state here at Loma Linda VA, we if you guys saw, our number is growing in female veterans. Um, this goes for employees and everybody here in Loma Linda VA. Please don't assume that it's just the male, it's just the male that's being a veteran. Um, it is females too. We do not accept cat calls, whistles, stares, any type of sexual harassment. If you do have that, please report it out. I do have the number here on the slide. Um, and then also I would do like to say, between the compliments and harassment, like it's okay to say, to thank a woman for their service, uh, telling them to have a nice day, uh, common, you know, making small talk with them, example as the weather, and then um, calling them by their preferred name. It is not okay to um, 
It is not okay to call them baby or say, hey, smile, you look prettier when you smile. Again, here at Loma Linda VA, we do not tolerate sexual harassment, so please give that number a call. Next slide. And then here with our women's program, we are the advocate for women's veterans. Um, we help facilitate and navigate coordination of primary care needs, mental health, specialized care, and reproductive health resources. We also offer education on benefits such as VA healthcare, claim process, and VA education services, as well as collaborations with county, community, and state agencies to identify gaps in services for women veterans. Again, my name is Ashley Bear, and I am the program support assistant. And my other colleagues, I do have Rocia Perez. She is the women's veteran program manager, as well as Dr. Sharon Jamie. She is our women's health medical director. Again, if you have any needs, please do not hesitate to give us a call here in Loma Linda VA to help with our Women's Veteran Program. Thank you so much, everybody, for your time. That's great information. Thank you, Ashley. We're honored to care for the rapidly growing number of women veterans across the Inland Empire. As a reminder, if you have a question, please press star three or type your question into the chat box. Next up, we'll hear from our partners at the VA Riverside National Cemetery, Mr. Keith Allen, our Executive Director of RNC, and Mr. Oliver Via Lobos, the Assistant Director of the Riverside National Cemetery. Gentlemen, I'll turn the floor over to you. Hey, good morning, sir. Uh, thank you for allowing us to represent the National Cemetery Administration. Uh, first, I would like to begin by thanking you and your staff uh, for the great care you provide to us, because uh, not only I am, I, am I an employee, I am also a patient here. So thank you for that. Um, Riverside National Cemetery is America's largest, busiest, and best national cemetery. Uh, we encompass 1,246 acres. Of that, currently, we are using about 500 acres for burials. Um, we have a, a life expectancy of probably an additional 100 years. So we have plenty of room for the veterans of the Inland Empire uh, that you serve in the VA uh, Loma Linda Health System. Uh, next slide, please. So I just want to quickly cover over some of the uh, benefits that you receive as veterans the National Cemetery Administration. Uh, there is a lot of a lot of information here, so I'll be quick, uh, but I will also uh, point you in the direction of where you can find this information. <clears throat> uh, next slide, please. So end of life planning services with VHA and VBA uh, and NCA would provide uh, a guide to end of life planning for the veteran and their family members. Um, we'd like to make it easier for you and your family at that time of need to make arrangements for the NCA to be able to honor you uh, at our cemeteries uh, with the highest honors possible uh, and uh, dignified service. Next slide, please. Uh, burial benefits. Uh, there are burial allowances that are available to the veteran and their family, and those can be found on the VBA page. Uh, there's a... Um, there, they have some stipulations that must be met. So I urge everyone to please uh, do your research. And uh, we are here, the National Cemetery is here to help you find that information. And like I said before, we will provide you uh, phone numbers or email address to be able to contact us to uh, make that clear. Next slide, please. Uh, so part of your burial benefits on service of active duty, as an American, as American uh, veteran, uh, you are entitled to a gravesite for you, a veteran and their spouse, and if there's any adult dependent children. Uh, that includes the opening and closing of the grave, uh, liner, which we use pre placed uh, concrete crypts now, uh, headstone marker and niche cover, uh, the, US, the US flag presented to the loved one uh, for the veteran, and the presidential memorial certificate at the time from the current. President of the United States. Next slide, please. Uh, at part, of, part of your service, you will be receiving, the veteran will receive honors from the Department of Defense. And this is coordinated at the time with the National, uh, National Schedule Center uh, to provide honors at your service. Uh, DOD will come out and send a team to, uh, to do honors at your service. And uh, depending on the amount of time and how you enter your service, retired or time of the year. Uh, that's how the military honors that you will receive. At Riverside National Cemetery, we are lucky enough to have the memorial honor detail that when they are on duty, they try to provide honors to every service that's there. So we're very lucky in that right. Next slide, please. 
Memorial planning, the NCA has free need eligibility. So veterans can now go online and establish their eligibility to be buried at the National Cemetery. Uh, now, before the time of need, the NCA will, the National Cemetery Administration will send out a certificate to you and uh, you will receive it in the mail and this will state your eligibility to be buried at National Cemetery. You may be buried at any National Cemetery in the country that you choose. As long as you meet the criteria, it does not have to be in your state of residence or the city you reside at the time of death. Uh, you may be placed at any National Cemetery that is open and receiving burials. Next slide, please. Also, uh, like I stated, you will get the headstone, uh, opening and closing of the grave, the service, the presidential memorial certificate, and as now, every, every veteran that enters the National Cemetery Administration will be entered into the Veterans Legacy Memorial webpage. This is a page established for every veteran in our system that honors you after ensuring that no veteran ever dies. So you will be live in our websites uh, forever, even once you enter the National Cemetery Administration. So this is a very great program. Uh, we have we have expanded it to increase to include I'm sorry to include the veterans at Arlington National Cemetery, at American Battle Monuments uh, Commission cemeteries in Europe, Africa, and Central America. So um, it's a great program. Over close to five million veterans are there. Uh, to end uh, to end my presentation, I'd like to also add that. Uh, working with VA Loma Linda, we are expanding our outreach services to try and include kiosks in all the uh, VA hospital at the main hospital at the ACC and the CBOX. Uh, I'd like to thank your time, sir. Thank you for your time today, sir. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, as a part of the Veterans Health Administration, we're proud to collaborate with uh, the National Cemetery Administration, Riverside National Cemetery, to honor our veterans' service and legacy. Thank you, Mr. Allen and Mr. Villa Lobos, for being here today. Remember, if you have any questions, please press star three or type your question into the chat box. Next, we'll hear about our community care program for Mr. Jeffrey Reyes, our clinical nurse manager for community care. Mr. Reyes. Hello, good morning. Thank you for allowing me to speak uh, about community care to the veterans out there. Uh, my name is Jeff Reyes. I'm the uh, acting chief for community care. Uh, community care uh, started off uh, back in 2017 with a staff of about 25. We've now grown to about a staff of 140. And the few slides I'll share next, I'll show you how much we've grown in the past few years. Next slide, please. So um, FY20, we received about 39,000 referrals for community care, which has doubled uh, in FY23. And our high point last year, about one out of every five referrals that for a veteran to be seen was done through the community. So as you can see, uh, community care is definitely an important part of the veterans' health healthcare process. And we're here to provide services for you as you need. Next slide. So um, how do you qualify for community care? So there's six basic, um, six major eligibility categories that's done through the Mission Act. The first one is a veteran needs the service. If a, if a veteran has a service that's not available at the VA medical facility, they will qualify for community care, such as OB. We don't provide services for women who, um, who are pregnant, so that's all automatically sent out to the community. Uh, any type of service that's not available here at Loma Linda VA or at any VA that they're referred to can go out to the community. Second is if a veteran lives out in a U.S. state or territory that does not have a full service VA medical facility, uh, that includes territories of the United States government, and I believe there's one state in, in uh, New England that doesn't have a VA facility. Number three is a very unique one, it's a grandfather. So back when um, community care was a choice program or non-VA care, there was a, a category called 40 milers. So if a veteran uh, met that category and was beyond 40 miles of care through a VA, they could be uh, sent through the community. So if a veteran, is uh, currently or has been referred to as a 40 miler or in the grandfather, they automatically qualify for community care. So this service is actually through attrition will be going away as uh, we no longer provide this um, 40 mile service anymore. Number four is the main reason is the main um, eligibility category for um, community care is our access and, and distance. So for drive time, uh, if you can't be seen for primary care or mental health within 30 minutes of your location to a VA facility that provides primary care mental health, you qualify for community care. 60 minutes for any specialty service. Uh, the next is wait time within this category, and that's 20 days for primary care and mental health, and then 28 days for specialty clinic. Uh, number five uh, eligibility is best medical interest. Now, if a veteran doesn't qualify for any of the other five um, eligibility criteria, the veteran and their VA provider, if they feel it's in the best medical interest of that veteran to still go to the community, 
can go under this specific category, but that they have, the veteran and the provider has to have a conversation about this. And number six is a very unique one, uh, which I haven't seen, is if a VA service line does not meet certain quality standards. Like for example, if a specific service doesn't meet a clinically required standards, any veteran that needs to go to that service can all not go to the community. Next slide, please. Now, uh, how to be seen in the community. So we always encourage veterans, do not go to a community doctor without an authorization. Everything has to be pre-authorized. So any, any community, community care service has to go through your VA provider. If you, the VA provider will enter community care consult and the Office of Community Care will go process that authorization for you and contact you and then let you know what community service you can go to. Now, if you're seeing a specialist and you're like, hey, you know, um, I have a podiatrist that lives just down the street from me, I'd like to go see him. That provider that lives just down the street from you must be within network, must be within the TriWest network for us to utilize them. So you can tell your, your uh, provider that you'd like to see this provider, the separate provider in the community, but if, they, if they're not within the network, we can't have you see that provider. Next slide, please. So here are the top 10 um, categories that we have for sending veterans out to the community. I'll just go down the list. Dental, optometry, primary care, skilled home health, which is like um, home health uh, PT and home health IV antibiotics or wound care, psychotherapy, physical therapy outpatient, ophthalmology, acupuncture, dental specialty service, and podiatry. Next slide. So since the growth of community care, um, we you know, have over 80,000 veterans last year that we've seen. We just don't have a call center. We actually have a help desk. So if you call the number that's listed on this slide here, they won't just you know, direct you to a specific person. They'll actually help you with your community care uh, consult. So if you call the VA's main line, 825 or extension 5248, or the direct line, 909-307-5248, an advanced medical assistant from community care will help guide you through your care through the community through your consult. You can also go through My Healthy Vet, which will be up next to present. And also, please let it, please make sure you have an uh, active community care consult before authorization before you call, because we cannot help you if there is a consult without a consult or authorization. Next slide. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you so much. Great. Thanks for the update, Mr. Reyes. Well, it's our goal to provide as much care as possible for our veterans here at VA. The community care program is a valuable asset that bolsters continuity of care for our patients. Our veterans can get the care they need where and when they need it. One valuable tool for continuity of care is the My Healthy Vet program, which empowers veterans to take an active role in managing their health care. Here to tell us more is Ms. Erin Pope, our nurse manager for Connected Care. Ms. Pope. Thank you, Mr. Saran. So, yes, I'm here to talk to you about our My Healthy Vet and some other connected care options we have for you. And I've learned that we cannot play the video here, but I can talk you through what's go what they're going to address there. So My Healthy Vet is a, a program we have that allows you to look at your medical records and to send messages to your provider. You can view labs and stuff, but it's actually getting ready to move. So it's going to have a new home under va.gov. So what does this mean for you? This is this move will allow you to manage your health care at the same place that you manage all your other VA benefits. So what should you expect? You're still gonna have the same trusted health tools such as appointment me appointments, messages, health records, and medications. And more tools are being gradual, gradually added to it. So I think they're looking at adding like travel reimbursement next. I am a veteran myself who gets my care at the with the Women's Health Program. And I just used it yesterday to do a medication refill and to look up when my next appointment was. It's really fantastic. It shows you what your service connection uh, percentage is and everything. So it will allow you to have easy management of your VA benefits from any digital device. It's really easy to use. So you need to go in and download the VA.gov app. Now with this move, the VA is moving to a more secure login. So you're not gonna be using your My Healthy Vet password anymore. This means you have to either use ID.me or ID.me or login.gov. If you have problems with login.gov, um, you're going to have to go to a post office if it doesn't let you through on the, um, the website for login.gov. ID.me will usually make you upload a driver's license or some sort of ID if you have not used it before, but it does make your account more secure. Also, I want you to know that the VA Loma Linda now participates in the VA Health Chat, which is another app you can download for virtual care. In the VA Health Chat, you can chat with a VA staff member when you have a question about a non-life-threatening health issue, or if you want to schedule a VA appointment or re 
refill a VA prescription and there's other things you can do. That can be accessed through the VA Health Chat app. It does not take you directly to your provider, but it does allow you to get help with some issues that are non-life-threatening that you can handle without having to get an appointment. Thank you. I think in the next slide, we'll give you the information for our My Healthy Vet coordinator. Her name is Jody Reynolds. You can find her over at the ACC and our Virtual Health Resource Center, which is in room 1D100 on the first floor. It's next door to the patient advocate. If you're having issues with My Healthy Vet or one of the other apps, you can contact her at the phone number 909-825-7439. Lots of times she can help you out over the phone. And I just want you to be aware that if you find that your teams are not listed on the um, on the My Healthy Vet when you're trying to choose your messages, first make sure you're going into va.gov. And the next thing you need to do is if it doesn't show up, you can call Jody and she can help you rectify that. So thank you very much. Erin, I think you answered the first question we got. Oh, this you did? The first question was from Robert from Marietta, and he said, how do I add or contact clinic on my healthy well, vet list like CPAP? Oh, that is probably one of the most popular things we get. And also, you should know that you have to be a patient in that clinic to be on the list, and they're not always listed as CPAP, so she can help you find out who it is. Great. Thank you. As VA transitions to more secure sign-in options for managing your healthcare online, Remember that our team is always here to help equip you with the tools you need. Now we'd like to tell you about some upcoming events happening here at VA Loma Linda, and I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Ashley Van Dien from our Public Affairs Office, who's here to share the latest. Ashley. Awesome, thank you, sir. All right, so we have a lot going on here at VA Loma Linda, lots of opportunities for veterans and our community. Next slide, please. So in honor of International Overdose Awareness Day, our pharmacy team will be hosting some resource tables at the Maine and ACC on August 29th. August 30th, our Virtual Health Resource Center is launching a class to assist veterans with the sign-in changes that Ms. Pope and the director mentioned. So Fridays at 10 a.m. starting on August 30th, through January 2025, veterans can bring their ID and mobile device to the ACC to get assistance with setting up their login.gov or ID.me accounts. On September 11th, we'll be hosting another Veterans Town Hall, this time tailored specifically to our women veterans. That will be at six o'clock. On September 12th, our Women Veterans Program is hosting a baby shower out in the community to support our veterans who are pregnant or expecting or just recently had a baby. On September 17th and the 24th, our team will host a cervical cancer prevention and screening outreach resource tables. On September 8th, we are excited to celebrate the Air Force birthday. So if you're at the hospital that day, or if you'd like to come in to join us, at 1145, we'll be cutting a cake at the Maine and ACC lobbies. So we hope to see you there for our Air Force birthday celebration. It's always a great time celebrating our veterans. On September 19th, our mental health team will be hosting their 12th annual Veterans Mental Health Summit in Redlands from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. That is open to veterans and the community. On September 19th, our Nutrition and Food Service is hosting a healthy teaching cooking class. They'll do a recipe demonstration. You get to try the food. They'll teach you how to eat healthy and cost-effective shopping as well. So those happen once a month over at the ACC. So to learn more about these events and more, please follow us on our social media pages at VA Loma Linda on Facebook and X. Hey, thanks for telling us uh, some of those great events that we plan for our veterans in the community. As Ashley mentioned, please be sure to follow our official website and our social media sites for the latest updates. And uh, that concludes our formal updates for the healthcare facility, and we're going to turn it over to questions. And so we already had the first question, uh, but let's move on to our next question from a veteran, Benjamin from Hemet. 
Um, he's asking, what services does the HEN CVOC offer? I currently travel to Loma Linda for care. I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Michael Choi, our Associate Director for Operations. Michael. Hi, good morning. Uh, thank you for the question. So we opened HEMIT uh, earlier this year in May. Uh, so the services that we offer now are primary care. We have lab. Uh, we have primary care mental health integration. And we have consultative services for pharmacy, uh, social work. We have telehealth. And we're in the soft opening phase of optometry. Uh, once we get that fully up and running, we will advise, uh, advertise it to social media and the veterans will have an opportunity to get that information through our public affairs. Great. Thank you, Michael. All right. This uh, next question is from Bill from the online platform. Uh, this is for our partners at the Riverside National Cemetery. What is the status of the completion of Village West Drive Street through to Indiana? I understand this thoroughfare will split the Riverside National Cemetery with traffic. This would be impact, impactful to the respect of the cemetery. What is being done? Oliver. I think, sir. Uh, so the current status of the project at uh, Village West Drive is in cooperation with March Joint Powers Authority for the county and city of Riverside. Uh, so we are in the planning stages, environmental planning, and uh, doing traffic studies for just that reason. We're going to study how much time we need and how much uh, property we need to ensure that there is no impact on cemetery operations. We are looking at possibly a year and a half to two years from completion. Uh, it'll run from Van Buren to Nandina Avenue going north to south and it should be approximately 100 feet wide, uh, 100 feet wide easement. Uh, so it's current, it's going to match pretty much what's there currently, the, the existing segment of the street. I hope that answered your question. Thank you so much. All right, next question is from Michelle from Hesperia. I'm going to uh, call on our Chief of Primary Care, Dr. Thurnjeet Nat. Um, the question is, I'm a vet and wondering if there are any future plans for the women's health care who can't come down to Loma Linda. Dr. Nat. Hi, good morning. Um, so currently we have transitioned two of our CBOCs and so down in our Hemet and we opened our Hemet CBOC and down in our Hemet and uh, Marietta CBOCs, we do have a nurse practitioner who is um, certified in providing a lot of those extra services such as colposcopies and endometrial biopsies. So we are looking to definitely expand those services down in our Marietta and Hemet catchment area. Um, as for our other CBOCs, we are also so um, uh, we have at least one designated women's health provider at every facility. So if you um, are not currently assigned to a women's health provider and um, would like to be reassigned to a women's health provider, please reach out. Um, women's health providers can provide all of your gender specific care um, that a, a primary care provider can provide. So they can do your pap smears, um, address any gender specific concerns, treat menopause, um, and various other conditions uh, that, that female veterans uh, uh, deal with. So hopefully that answered your question. Great. Thank you, Dr. Nat. Our next question is coming from Georgina from Palm Desert. This is for uh, Mr. Jeff Reyes, care in the community. Can you still use community care if you have Medi-Cal? For new login, va.gov, if you are already are already, oh, that seems like that, that's uh, for Aaron. So we're going we're gonna to break this question into two parts. <laughs> And so, Jeff, we're gonna, the first part is, can you still use community care if you have Medi-Cal? So, um, Medi-Cal has nothing to do with community care. You have to be referred by a VA provider. So, uh, you could have Medi-Cal, but uh, community care is always uh, pre-authorized through the VA. So, you need to contact your VA provider, uh, whether PCP or specialty, before you can be seen in the community. So, really, Medi-Cal has nothing to do with it. Great. Jeff, we also have a question from Amy from Moreno Valley. And she says, I was told I'm eligible for community care, but I haven't received paperwork to do it. Can I do this online? And where do I follow up? And, and is, do I have to do it in person? Good question. So uh, you need, like I said before, um, community care is always referred through the VA. So if you were told by a, a VA provider or someone from the specialty clinic, I would reach out to your VA provider and ask them if they sent a consult for you for community care. Um, I guess to check out online, you probably go through My Healthy Vet, talk to your provider that way to see if a care for community care in the community referral has been sent out to you. Yeah, Jeff, you're a very popular guy. So Dalton from Blythe has a question uh, regarding community care. I live 175 miles from Loma Linda. Uh, Parker is 40 miles away, but has to go to Loma Linda for frames 
why can't they have those in Parker? Okay, so this question, two um, miles from the Parker is 40 miles away. So um, you can refer it if you have a, v, a provider in, in VA Loma Linda to an optometry, to optometrist in your local area. Um, I, what I do know about optometry is that prescriptions um, can be done in the community, but frames and glasses have to be done through DME here at VA Loma Linda Optometry. Thank you. All right, um, here's the second part of that one question, Aaron, this is for you. Uh, for new login on va.gov, if you are already in ID me, do you need to do anything else? Nope. Great. Use that same ID me account to log into it. Wonderful. Thank you so much. All right. Um, and then Mary from Moreno Valley asks, uh, Aaron, uh, can veterans get training on the online systems? She does not know how to use them. So that's we have a virtual health resource center over at the ACC. If you need train it like and Ashley announced, they are, are going to be doing the training about the ID dot or the ID me and the login.gov on Fridays. So if that's what your question is about, you can attend those trainings. Otherwise, you can go over to the ACC or you can call in to that number for Jody and they can answer some of your questions at our virtual health resource center, which is there to help you with some of the online systems. Hey, so much. Um, Scrolling for questions. Here we go. Um, I'm at a loss for questions. Can uh, can someone pull up a question for me? All right, here we go. Zama from online chat. Does Loma Linda VA have a group or committee that veterans can participate in to provide constructive feedback to administration about ways to improve services and care? Sometimes. Things are created with good intentions, but not received as intended. That's a great question. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Michael Choi, our Associate Director for Operations, who is over, uh, who is Executive Oversight of the Veterans Experience. Hi, thank you for the question. So, yes, the answer is uh, we do. Um, it is a new group uh, called the Veterans Family Advisory Council. So uh, there are opportunities for veterans. Uh, we can't entertain every veteran's um, comments and feedback, but we do try to make an effort to reach, uh, have a certain amount of veterans be a part of that group so that they can provide feedback as family members and users of the healthcare system so that we can make improvements. And secondly, we're also looking for, um, we also incorporate veteran employees into our rapid improvement events, our process improvement events, make sure that the users of the healthcare system are, so are also providing feedback to our processes. Michael. All right, Dr. Nat, we have a question regarding primary care in, at Palm Desert. Um, somebody, this is uh, Michael from Palm Desert. Uh, he says that at Cy Kaplan, a doctor retired and he wants to know when a new provider will be available. They're currently doing telehealth appointments with the Redlands doctor. So they're receiving teleprimary care, uh, but they wanna be able to see a uh, in, in-person provider. Thank you. So we do actually currently have a provider onboarding for Palm Desert. They are currently in the process um, and we have listed um, positions. We are interviewing for additional um, providers. So uh, as soon as the provider that's currently onboarding, he's also going to be the section chief of that facility. So um, as soon as he's done onboarding, he will be assigned to that uh, virtual uh, provider that you are speaking of. All right, great. Thank, Thank you, you. Dr. Nat. Uh, Larry from online chat he is saying, uh, is the VA medical system still mm -hmm. using vaccines that can contain aluminum? Any any uh, feedback from our clinical leaders on that? Yeah, well, um, this is Jane. I'm the Associate Director for Patient Care Services, and I work closely with the flu and uh, COVID vaccine team, but I do not know the answer to that question, so we'll have to get your information um, and give it back to you, sir. Great. Oh, Thank you, Jane. It's all, it's always better to, to hold the question, and get the right answer provided than the guess. I appreciate that. All right. Um, a veteran from Menifee wants to know if they can repeat reproductive issues that re require assistance for her and the spouse that VA can offer. Uh, I'm going to repeat the question and uh, if uh, Ashley or Dr. Nat might have an answer to this one. A veteran from Menifee wants to know if they can repeat reproductive issues require assistance for her and spouse that VA can offer. Dr. Nat, 
Hi, it's Dr. Knapp from Primary Care. So um, I am not sure what uh, services you initially received and if that's the question that you're asking, but I would definitely reach out to your primary care provider or our gynecology department. Um, if you haven't already been set up with our gynecology department, your primary care provider can then refer you to our gynecology department and then they can review your history and uh, the current situation and then they can offer you the options that you're um, eligible for and uh, if, uh, if uh, they can answer any other additional questions. Great, thank you, Dr. Nat. We have another clinical question, so this might be between you and uh, Dr. Davis in, uh, in mental health. Walter from Rancho Mirage wants to know, does the VA have any support groups for those of us veterans who have had prostate cancer and are now dealing with ED issues? Do you have any support groups for these individuals? Good morning. Uh, it's a lovely question. In terms of a support group for that specific concern, uh, I'm not aware of one at this point in time. But what I do know is we have an integrated uh, oncology psychologist who specifically works with our oncology clinics to provide um, support for situations like what you described. And so I would certainly encourage you to reach out through oncology get referred to that service. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Um, John from Cathedral City, Dr. Seacrest wants to know, there is no pharmacy in the entire Coachella Valley to get temporary prescriptions filled. How can we get this taken care of? The Walgreens near me always says no. Well, first of all, I appreciate the question. You know, pharmacy service is so important. Uh, it touches every part of the, of the healthcare system. And I, I, I need to learn more about what you're experiencing, sir, to really properly address the question. What I will say in large, uh, part is that pharmacies recently been realigned under under the chief of staff and we are completely reimagining and reinventing and, and restaffing pharmacy in a way that, that hopefully will begin to serve our veterans better than ever before in history we recently hired a a new chief of pharmacy uh, with a grand vision and, and i believe that these kinds of issues are going to be front on the front burner to how we're going to basically make it better for you all in these outlying areas so one of the things we'll do is we'll get back to you uh, directly on the specific question, your specific area, but just know that it's on my top of my list to make pharmacy services better for everyone in the network. All right, great. Thank you, Dr. Seacrest. Um, uh, Mr. Reyes, uh, we have a question regarding community care, and this is Alice from Chino. Uh, she wants to know, what is the process with community care when the veteran is authorized they should be given a list of providers within that area. Does that exist? If so, where can I find it? So when you're contacted uh, to get your appointment scheduled for community care, the advanced MSA that calls you can give you a list of providers in that area. So we have a tool called PPMS, I forgot what it stands for, but it gives us a total list of all the providers uh, within your area for that specific service. And that advanced MSA can, can uh, let you know that list of providers for you. Or if you need to, um, if you're not happy with that provider, you can call extension 5248 with the numbers that were provided earlier. And we can also refer you to a different provider. Great, thank you, Jeff. All right, uh, next question is for the Riverside National Cemetery. This is Charles from Winchester. Uh, and the question is, can a headstone be provided for a burial at a private cemetery? Mr. Villa Lobos. Uh, Charles, yes, that's a great question. Uh, yes, yeah, sure can. Uh, as part of your burial benefits, you can choose to be buried at a national cemetery or in a private uh, cemetery, and the VA will furnish a marker for you. Uh, you could go ahead and email me at rnc, as the Riverside National Cemetery admin, at va.gov. Or if anybody else needs more information, please call us at 951-653-8417. Again, 951-653-8417, and we'll be happy to, ha happy to answer any questions uh, pertaining to the National Cemetery Administration there. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Erica from online chat says, how do I access VA services, VA healthcare, and where do I start? Mr. Choi. Yeah, all right, thanks for the question. So the best way to start uh, your access care uh, in the VA is to come to the facility. Uh, when you come in through the main doors, uh, we have online re uh, receptions in the lobby, and just let them know that you're here to start your care at the VA and they can direct you in the right places where you can get set up, uh, get the paperwork in um, to qualify for VA care and get set up with the provider. Great, thank you. And if you're not able to come directly into the medical center, uh, please start at 
www.va.gov. You can start an online application to enroll for your healthcare benefits. Next question is from Jack in Palm Desert. Uh, Dr. Nat, uh, Jack says, it takes too long to see a doctor at Palm Desert CBOC. It's a 15, month, 15 months at a time. Uh, contact times to call veterans back is two months. When will VA take over the CBOC? I think this is uh, this is an old experience that that's being shared. Um, yeah, so we have already transitioned the Palm Desert CBOC. Um, we are currently in the process of fully staffing the CBOC, but uh, we are um, opening to new patients, and so hopefully within the next couple months we should like we took over in April. So hopefully we should have already improved the communication. Um, you know, if you use secure messaging, I would strongly suggest using secure messaging to contact uh, your provider. And then as far as any other um, appointments or anything like that, if you have specific questions, please reach out. Um, we'll be happy to try to help uh, in any way that we can. I do know that there were some long wait times for uh, established patients, but we are working on getting fully staffed with providers so we can improve those wait times. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Nat. Um, out of our five uh, previously, for decades, our, our community-based outpatient clinics were contracted uh, by a private contractor. And um, two of those larger clinics, Marietta and Palm Desert, as Dr. Nat mentioned, were transitioned over to VA leased buildings with VA staff. So those are VA operated clinics. Uh, as of April of this year. And so we're very excited to uh, provide direct patient care to our veterans in the Inland Empire. And we do uh, honor and respect the care that is being provided by our contracted partners because they are helping to leverage their resources in delivering world-class care to our veterans as well. So thanks for working through our transitions with us. Uh, Jeff, the next question is for you from Theodore from, chat, uh, from the chat box online. Uh, can I use my dentist insurance at the VA or do I have to go through community care? So um, if you have a private uh, insurance, you cannot do that. Um, you have to get a referral from a VA provider. So you have to go through VA Dental to be seen in the community for dental services. Okay, thank you. All right, Dr. Seacrest, uh, this next question is uh, for you. Uh, Stephen from Chino Hills asks, the issue with VA Loma Linda is the gap between primary care and specialty care. It gets lost in the system. I've been trying to get a surgery appointment, getting the runaround. What is the guidance or flow chart or who to contact? And this is pretty great because you're an orthopedic surgeon who actually does clinic here at Loma Linda and you do surgery. So you're you're intimately uh, knowledgeable about this. So sure, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Dr. Nan to come up as well. Uh, I think we should tag team this. It's Sean, you're correct. I am a surgeon who practices in this hospital. And it's so true that uh, there's always room to improve communication with referrals from primary care to specialty care. Dr. Nett, what is your perspective on this? Because obviously this is mission critical that we get this right. Um, yeah. Please. I do think that um, there's definitely room for improvement. Um, I know that we are working with our HAS partners. This probably be a good HAS question, um, but we are working with our HAS partners to improve our communication and really to take ownership for those patients when we put consults in. Um, I think that is the most difficult part is when we place the consults from primary care, uh, sometimes there can be a delay in getting in contact with the patient um, and getting in touch with them. But again, we strongly encourage that you use uh, secure messaging or reach out to us um, because if you're having trouble getting an appointment, then please reach out to your primary care provider um, to at least try to provide some assistance. They can reach out to that specific service and let them know that you are having a difficult time getting an appointment. Um, and we are working with our HAS partners to hopefully streamline that process in the future. Thanks, Dr. Nett. I just want to punctuate also from, from my perspective and to answer the question, is in order for that communication to be effective, there has to be good access to specialty care services. And I'm extremely proud to report to this wonderful audience that we've taken uh, extraordinary measures to ensure that access to care to mission critical specialties like orthopedics, cardiology, dermatology, is well within uh, what we call Mission Act standards. That is uh, less than 28 days. And in most cases across VA Lomond, it's actually earlier than that. So we have really put a lot of effort into decreasing wait times for these very, very important specialty services that we are so proud to offer. Great, thank you very much. Uh, next question is for the Riverside National Cemetery. This is Raymond from Quartzsite. 
He's asking uh, and says that as a vet, he would have the ability to be buried in the National Cemetery. Is the spouse, if, if the spouse passes before the veteran, can they be buried there? Uh, yes, sir. Great question. Uh, yes, uh, it, it does not matter who passes first, whether the spouse or the veteran. Uh, you're both entitled to full services at the National Cemetery Administration. So if your spouse happens to pass before you, uh, you're more than welcome to set up for service and we will do the interment and then uh, have a space ready for you when your time comes, hopefully not too soon. Thank you, Oliver. Uh, I appreciate everyone responding to these. It's almost like a rapid rapid fire question session. So thank you guys for being flexible. Um, next question um, is for primary care. So Sylvia from Jerupa Valley asks, she's one year away from being eligible for Medicare and currently is 70% service connected. Do I have to sign up for Medicare and will the VA remain my primary care provider? Yes, thank you for the question. Very good question. So if you are eligible for Medicare, um, it, it is a, a separate benefit. Um, it does not affect your VA benefit, so you will still be eligible for care here through the VA. Um, I believe Medicare Part A is automatic, so that is what provides you with inpatient care. As far as uh, Medicare Part, Part B or for drug coverage, that is um, entirely up to you if you want those additional services. If you live in an area that may it may be a little bit difficult to get to a VA facility, you may want to consider the additional services, um, but you will not become ineligible for your um, VA care. So that will continue on separately outside. Any outside insurance that you have is um, outside insurance, whether it's Medicare, Kaiser, anything through your job. Um, it does not affect your ability to be seen here at the VA. We are a benefit, so you always have access and you have access to both. So sometimes patients will go to their private insurance and also come to us because they get um, access to different services. Thank you, Dr. Knapp. And uh, last question is for my healthy vet, uh, Aaron. Uh, Judy from Wildemar uh, asks, uh, my healthy vet, with the upcoming changes to log into my healthy vet, will DS login still be an option? No, it's moving either to IDME or login.gov. That's a national initiative. So unfortunately, we have no control over it, but they'll have to move to that IDME or login.gov. Okay, great. Ooh, I got the first and the last. You did. <laughs> you're, you're the bookend. Thank you so much, Aaron. I also want to thank the 1,581 veterans who logged in today in the submission of the 12 online web questions in addition to the phone calls. Our team is always striving to provide you with outstanding care and an excellent patient experience every time. And even though we may not get it right 100% of the time, we are going to try 100% of the time. Uh, if you'd like to re-watch or share today's town hall meeting, the broadcast will be available on the VA Loma Linda Facebook page. We look forward to seeing you at our next Veterans Town Hall meeting. Take care and enjoy the end of summer. Thanks, everybody.